everyone, welcome back to the Great Teams League. Here in the 1960s through 1989, we have our number one seed, the 1961 New York Yankees, uh, taking on the 1972 Oakland A's, our number eight seed. Let me verify we are recording. We are. And let's play some baseball. This is game number three in our Great Teams League here in Digital Diamond Baseball. And Sal Bando will lead things off for the Oakland A's against Whitey Ford, the pitcher for the New York Yankees. And here's the first at bat of the game, Bando. That's low, ball four. We have the shortstop now for the A's, Bert Campanaris, coming to the plate. The leadoff runner is on. And... Hmm. Neither of these two guys at the top of the lineup are very good hitters. We're going to do – we're going to pitch with the Yankees here. Campanaris is going to lay down a bunt. Try to move Bando over to second. Here's the bunt. It's a beauty rolling to stop to the right of the mound. Ford has it. He'll have to hurry. He fires a strike to get Campanaris by a step. Bando moves up to second on the sacrifice bunt by Campanaris. That brings to the plate for the A's, the left fielder, Joe Rudy. He hit 305 in 1972, hit 19 home runs, batting in front of Reggie Jackson today. The runner on second, one out. <laughs> hit hard to right field, right at Roger Maris, and he catches it for the out. And that's two away. Reggie Jackson now comes to the plate for the A's with two with one on, second, and two outs. Reggie Jackson hit 25 home runs, batted 265 in 1972. Here's the pitch now to Reggie Jackson with one on and two outs. Pitch to Jackson. High hopper to Gardner at second. He fires the first in time for the out. So we have no runs on no hits and one left on base for Oakland. We go to the bottom of the first, and the score is 0-0. Just as we started, Vita Blue is the pitcher today for the 1972 Oakland A's. Uh, as you probably well know, he passed away here just a few days ago. Uh, so certainly remembering him as as he pitches in this game today. We have Cleet Boyer leading off for the Yankees, their third baseman. He batted 224 in 1961, and he will lead things off today for the Yankees against Vita Blue. Here's the pitch. Slap to first, Epstein gloves it, fit, flips to Blue at first, who steps on the bag for out number one, and that brings to the plate Hector Lopez, the left fielder for the Yankees today. And he will come to the plate against Vita Blue. Here's the pitch from Blue. Liner to right field. They have to play it on a hop. Single for Lopez. Mangual have to play it on a hop. So we have one out with Mickey Mantle coming to the plate who had an OPS of 1.135 in 1961. He hit 54 home runs, batted 317, had an outstanding year. And he'll come to plate with one out and Lopez on first base. Here's the pitch to Mantle from Blue. Mantle shot to left, but Rudy is waiting, and he pulls it in for out number two, and that'll bring to the plate Roger Maris, who hit 61 home runs in 1961. Broke Babe Ruth's record of 60, and he will come to the plate with Lopez on first. And Blue looking to get out of the, this uh, with a runner on here. Line to center, but Ryder Reggie Jackson had him played perfectly for the out, and we have a pretty quiet first inning from both teams. We go to the top of the second, and 0-0 zero, is our score. Mike Epstein comes to the plate for the A's. He had 26 home runs in 1972 here's the pitch from Ford to Epstein nobody out in the top of the second inning liner to center field Mantle comes in on it he makes a nice running catch for the first out of the inning and that brings up Angel Mangual Manguel and it's not Manguel Mangual I'm probably butchering that but it is what it is he'll be batting for the Yank or for the A's here in the top of the second with nobody on and one out. A single, single hit out to left field. 
So one on and one out. That brings to the plate the A's second baseman, Tim Cullen. And he'll come to the plate against Whitey Ford with one on and one out. Here's the pitch to Cullen from Ford. Fly ball to left. Lopez is there. He puts it away. Four out. Number two brings to the plate the A's catcher with two outs. Gene Tennis. Here's the pitch. Runner on first for the A's, but there's two outs. And the A's catcher looks to extend the inning for Oakland. Swung on, line to right field. It's going to get down in front of Maris. Base hit. Do you want to go to an extra base? You have a 99.4% chance. I think we'll play those odds. Yes. The runner heads to third, and he makes it easily to third. Maris doesn't even attempt to throw over there. He just tosses it into second. And so with runners on the corners, that brings to the plate Vita Blue, who uh, hit in 45 at-bats. He had two hits. He was a 0-44 hitter. Struck out 34 times in 45 at-bats. Vita Blue was not much of a hitter, at least not in 1972. But Oakland hopes for the best. Whitey Ford with runners on the corners and two outs. Whitey Ford is thankful to see Vita Blue at the plate. Blue, a shot to left. Lopez takes a step back, reaches up, and gloves it for the out. Vita Blue makes contact, and everyone held their breath for just a second. But Yankees get out of it without any runs scored. So we go to the bottom of the second. Yankees are up, and the score is 0-0. Elston Howard, the Yankee catcher now, who hit 348 in 1961. He comes to the plate with no outs and nobody on base. Here's the pitch from Blue to Howard swings and struck him out with a good fastball, and Howard goes down swinging. Coming to the plate now is the Yankee first baseman, Bill Scourron. Hit 28 home runs in 1961. Certainly was overshadowed quite a bit by Maris and Mantle, but 28 home runs, nothing to sneeze at. Here's the pitch to the Yankee first baseman. It's a shot to center, but Jackson is there, and he pulls it in for out number two. And coming to the plate now is the Yankee shortstop, Tony Kubek, hit 276 with 38 doubles in 1961. He will now come to the plate with nobody on base and with two outs. Here's the pitch from Blue to Kubek. Loop to right field for a base hit, a single, a two out single, and that will bring up the Yankee second baseman, Billy Gardner, who. Only played in 41 games, so I don't know why he's in this lineup. May have to think about that next time. Here's the pitch now to Gardner with one on and two outs from Blue to Gardner. Swung on and missed, strike three. No runs, one hit, and one left on base for the Yankees. We played all the way through two innings, and the score is 0-0. Both teams have no runs, two hits, and no errors. We're back to the top of the A's order against Whitey Ford, Sal Bando who I believe was walked his first time up. Here's his second plate appearance. It pitches on his way. That's a low for ball four. And Bando, I believe, is walked for the second time in this game. And for the second time in this game, I think we're going to let Campanaris bunt him over. So the Yankees anticipating this move again will bring in the corners. And the A's will again lay down a sacrifice bunt with Campanaris. Here's the pitch. He gets it down. It's a good bunt fielded just off the mound by Ford. The only plays at first, and he throws there for the out. Bando moves to second. Campanaris has laid down two sacrifice bunts here in the game. Joe Rudy now gets a chance again with a runner on second and one out. And here comes the pitch to the A's left fielder, Joe Rudy. Line to right, but right at Roger Maris, who had him played perfectly for the out. Out number two, Reggie Jackson now to the plate with a runner on second once again, and once again two outs. This is the top of the third is playing out a lot like the top of the first for the A's so far. Here's the pitch to Jackson. Ground ball to short, nice high hop to Kubek, but he gloves it and he throws Jackson out. And so once again, the A's get someone on base, and they get them in scoring position, but they can't bring them around to score. We go to the bottom of the third, 
and it's 0-0. That brings to the plate the Yankee pitcher Whitey Ford. Here is the pitch from Blue to Ford. High bouncer behind the bag at first, but Epstein has it, and he tosses it to Blue for out number one here in the bottom of the third inning. We go back to the top of the Yankee order. Cleet Boyer coming to the plate against Vita Blue. And here's Boyer at the plate now. He lifted the shallow center field, but Jackson comes in, and he's got it. He makes the catch for out number two. Hector Lopez, the Yankee left fielder now, to the plate with nobody on and two outs. Hit on the button towards second. Way too hot to handle. That's going to go by him into center field for a base hit. Reggie Jackson is there to scoop it up and get it in quickly. But that's going to be a base hit for Hector Lopez. He extends the inning and brings to the plate the Yankee power hitter Mickey Mantle. Vita Blue would have loved to get out of this inning without having to face Mantle, but he has to face him. Swung on, bounces this one right back to the mound. An easy play for Blue. He tosses over to first for the out. So no runs, one hit, and one left on base for the Yankees. We've played three full innings, and it's still 0-0 zero to zero. here in the top of the fourth now. Mike Epstein will come to the plate for the A's. Looking for our first run of the game. This has been a pitcher's duel so far. Here's the pitch to Epstein. Ball four. It was really close. Epstein may have gotten a little bit of a break there. Good break for the A's. And that will bring the A's right fielder to the plate who is going to lay down a bunt right here. A's are going to play small ball as long as they're getting a good game out of blue. Here's a beauty up the first baseline. Makes a good play to tag the runner going by. He nearly beat it out, but he'll settle for the sacrifice. Taking second is Epstein. So the A's, their small ball, as far as moving runners over, they've executed that flawlessly so far. But they're having trouble getting those timely clutch hits to actually score these guys. So runner on second with one out. That brings to the plate Tim Cullen for the A's. Cullen looking to at least move the runner maybe to second and see maybe what can happen. Put the ball in play, hopefully. Facing Whitey Ford. Soft liner. No, it's trapped at second base. He throws to first for the out. Epstein moves to third, so two outs. Cullen doesn't bring in a run, but he at least moves the runner over to third. It's all up to the A's catcher now, Gene Tennis, facing Whitey Ford. He's one for one today. In fact, he has one of Oakland's two hits in this game. So the A's catcher looks to get another hit. Line to right. It won't fall in. He hit it too hard. Maris catches it on a line to retire the A's catcher. And the A's get a runner to third, but they can't score him. So no runs, no hits, and one left on base for Oakland. We go to the bottom of the fourth, and Roger Maris leads off for the Yankees here in the bottom of the fourth inning with no score. Here's the pitch from Vita Blue to Roger Maris. Chopped to second base. Cullen gloves it and fires the first for the out. Yankees are having trouble figuring out Vita Blue here today. Elston Howard comes to the plate. He's 0 for 1 today. One out in the inning. Nobody on base. Howard swings, hits it towards second, but right at Cullen who stays with it to retire Howard, and that's out number two. Bringing to the plate, what was his first name, Bill? Bill Skoron. Skoron? Could be Skoron. The Yankee first baseman with two outs, nobody on base. Here's the pitch to the Yankee first baseman. Fly ball to deep center field, but Jackson is there, and he makes the catch for out number three. We move to the top of the fifth inning. We've played four. No score. And only five total hits in this game. Brings up Vita Blue for his second of bat of the game, facing Whitey Ford. Here's the pitch from Ford to Vita Blue. Swung on, line sharply toward left field, down the line and heading for the corner. Blue is off to the races, and he cruises toward second for a double. What in the world? Vita Blue is an 044 hitter, and he just hit a double against Whitey Ford. What in the world is happening in this game? 
Yeah, he was two for 45 in real life in 1972. But now, as of right now, he is one for two with a double, ladies and gentlemen. So Sal Bando. Well, you've we've done small ball all day long. To me, you sure want to bunt him over to third and give yourself two chances to get him in from third. So the Yankees, they're going to bring in the corners here, once again anticipating another Oakland A's bunt. And Sal Bando will be tasked with bunting blue over to third base. He gets it down. It's a good bunt. Ford has to come and get it. He throws the first for the out, and the sacrifice for the fourth time today works for the A's. Vita Blue goes to third, and so with one out, the A's should have every opportunity in the world to score their first run today. Campanaris comes to the plate, and for the first time today, he'll have a chance to actually swing the bat. The A's shortstop here, pitch from Ford, hits hard on the ground, into left field for a base hit, up to get it is Lopez, a single for Campanaris. Here comes Vita Blue, and the tie is broken. The first run of the game is scored thanks to Vita Blue's double and the sacrifice bunt by Bando and Burke Campanaris base hit. What a what a turn of events here. Now Campanaris stole 52 bases. He's going to try and steal. He's going to try to steal second base. With one out, Campanaris over there looking to steal second. Here comes the pitch. Throws to first. He's safe. He's almost picked off first there. He's not going anywhere on this at bat. Joe Rudy now at the plate. Swung on, popped up on the infield right to Whitey Ford, and he makes the catch for out number two. Reggie Jackson now to the plate with a runner on first. Campanaris won't go anywhere this time. He'll wait and see what Reggie Jackson can do. With two outs, a runner on first. Here's the pitch to Jackson. Here's the pitch. Swung on, and it's popped up just behind the mound. Kubek is under it. He makes the catch, and that'll do it for Oakland. But they do score a run, and they have the lead now. One to nothing. Vita Blue, for the first time in this game, is pitching with the lead. In the bottom of the fifth inning, facing Tony Kubek. It'll be Kubek, Gardner, and Ford. And then Boyer back to the top of the order if anyone gets on. Here's the first pitch. Here's the first batter, Kubek. Lifted to right, but right fielder Mangual settles under it, and he makes the catch for out number one. That'll bring to the plate the Yankee second baseman, Bill Gardner. Here's the pitch to Gardner. One away, nobody on. Rolled to second. Cullen gloves it. Fires to first. Four out number two. Whitey Ford now, the Yankee pitcher, would love to get some payback against Vita Blue for that double he hit in the last inning. Whitey Ford to the plate with two outs and nobody on. Here's the pitch from Blue. Soft liner. Campanaris traps it, who throws the first for the easy out. So the Yankees go quietly in the bottom of the fifth. One, two, three. And we come to the top of the sixth inning with Epstein, Mangual, and Cullen coming to the plate for the A's. Here comes Mike Epstein now, the A's first baseman. Nobody nobody gone, no outs. Ford is inside, Epstein hits the deck. They'll send him to first base. Gets up, dusts himself off, glares out at Whitey Ford. And Epstein is on with a hit-by-pitch here in the top of the sixth inning. All right, well, we have been... We've been bunning all game, and it's worked so far. The Yankees will bring in the corners. The A's will gladly sacrifice an out here if they can get Epstein over to second base. Here comes a bunt from Mangual, the A's right fielder. He gets it down. Howard is on it. He glances. He thinks about the lead runner, and he fires to Gardner to get him at second. And so for the first time today, the A's efforts to sacrifice bunt fail. And the Yankees get the lead runner. So Cullen now comes to the plate for the A's with one on and one out. Here's the swing from Cullen. Swung on, hard ground ball down the first baseline. Over the bag at first, headed into the right field corner. Maris has it, but it's going to go to the wall. It's going to be a double for Cullen. Would you like the runner to attempt an extra base? Um, A 74.5% chance. 
I don't know if this is going for third or I, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. I wish I knew if this was going for home or not. We're just going to say yes. Going to be a double for Cullen. Mangua is trying for extra bases. Here comes Mangua to score all the way from first. And thanks to Tim Cullen's double, the A's are now up two to nothing here in the top of the sixth inning. Brings to the plate Gene Tennis for the A's, the A's catcher. He's one for two today with one out and a runner on second base. Here's the A's catcher against Whitey Ford. Slow roller to Boyer. He scoops it up and tosses over to first for the out. And the runner has to hold at second. And so Vita Blue comes up with runner on second and two outs. Here's the pitch to Blue. From Whitey Ford, little dribbler to short. Easy play for Kubek. He guns it over to first to take care of Blue, and that'll end the inning. We go to the bottom of the six. The A's tack on another run, and it's two to nothing. The 1972 Oakland Athletics are beating the 1961 New York Yankees by a score of two to nothing. But we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. There's still a lot of baseball left, and the Yankees are eager to get a hit. Boyer comes up to the plate to lead things off for the Yankees in the bottom of the six. Blue, here comes the pitch from Blue, a high fly ball to deep center. But Jackson is there. He drifts back and catches it easily for out number one. Hector Lopez comes to the plate against Vita Blue. Here comes the pitch to Lopez. With one out and no one on, ball four. Lopez works out a walk. I think that's Blue's. Yeah, that's his first walk of the game. And only the, I guess counting the hits, only the third base runner for the Yankees. Only the, excuse me, only the fourth base runner for the Yankees in this game. And he walks someone to set Mickey Mantle up with one out. And runner on first. Here's the pitch to Mickey Mantle. Misses inside, ball four, and now Blue has walked the last two Yankee hitters for the first time in this game. Blue's actually in some trouble here. Roger Maris strolls to the plate with two on and one out. And if you're an Oakland fan, you start to shift uncomfortably in your seat right about now. Yankee fans, though, they've scooted to the edge of their seat Everyone's watching what Roger Maris is going to do against Vita Blue here in the bottom of the six with one out and two on. Here comes the pitch to Maris. Struck him out swinging. Oh, wow. With, with, in the biggest moment of the game so far today, Vita Blue comes through and he strikes out the Yankee slugger. But he's not out of the inning yet. There's two outs. Elston Howard now comes to the plate, who hit 348 in 1961. And he's looking to score some of these Yankee runners. Here comes the pitch from Blue to Elston Howard. Hitting the air to shallow right, but the right fielder's there. He closes in easily to make the catch, and so the Yankees make the most noise they've made all day on the bases with back-to-back -back walks, but... No runs, no hits, and they leave them both on base. We've played six full innings, and the A's are up. A score two to nothing. Whitey Ford will face Sal Bando, Campanaris, and Rudy, and then Reggie Jackson if anyone gets on base. Here's Sal Bando to lead things off in the top of the seventh. Here's the pitch, a little line drive to left, but Lopez saw it the whole way, and he closes in to make the catch. Great play by the Yankees' left fielder, for out number one. Campanaris to the plate. He has two sacrifice bunts and a single today. And he will be looking to get another hit or get on base again. Here's the pitch. Shot up the middle, off the bag, and into center field. And it slows down for Mantle. And Campanaris has himself another base hit here in the top of the seventh inning. Joe Rudy to the plate. He'll get ready to take the pitch or swing away here. Campanaris leads off from first. Line sharply toward left, down the line, and headed for the corner. Rudy is off to the races, and he cruises toward second for a double. We're not going to send the runner home. So Rudy has a one-out double, and Campanaris has to hold it third. So we have, with Reggie Jackson at the plate, one out, runners on second and third for the A's here in the top of the seventh inning. 
Jackson is 0 for 3 today. Some would say he's due. Here's the pitch to Jackson. Swung on high fly ball to deep center field, but Mantle drifts back and catches it easily for the out. Campanaris is going to have no problem tagging up. He scores easily without a throw. And the A's take a 3 to nothing lead. That brings to the plate Mike Epstein, the A's first baseman, with a runner on second and two outs. Here's the pitch to Epstein from Whitey Ford. Kubet takes it, hit to the shortstop, and he throws Epstein out. We have the seventh inning stretch, and the Yankees are wondering where all the offense is at. Vita Blue starting to show signs of uh, fatigue. He's going to lead things off, or the Yankee first baseman will lead things off here in the bottom of the seventh. Blue's going to stay in at least for a moment. Face the Yankee first baseman. Hard line drive to center, but Jackson is there. Makes the catch for the out. Tony Kubek comes to the plate with one out and nobody on to face Vita Blue. Here comes the pitch to Kubek. Line drive to center, but Jackson is once again there, and he makes a great running catch. Bill Gardner, with two outs and nobody on, comes to the plate. Here's the pitch to Gardner from Vita Blue. Winds and fires, swing and a miss. A huge strike up to end things. That's probably going to be the game for Vita Blue. But what a what a what a game for the A's pitcher has kept the Yankee offense in check all game long. Now we'll bring to the plate here in the top of the eighth. The A's lead three nothing. Mangual to the plate for the A's. Here's the pitch from Whitey Ford. Hit to second. Gardner has it on the hop. He fires over to first. Four out number one. That'll bring to the plate Cullen, the A's second baseman, with no one on and one out. A's up three nothing. Way outside, they walk him, and now Whitey Ford is starting to show signs of tiring. The Yankee catcher now, or Yankee catcher, the A's catcher comes to the plate. Tennis, he's one for three today. Here's the pitch with a runner on first and one out. Hit on the ground to short. He throws to Gardner for the four, first, the force, and over to first in time for the double play. And so I think that's I think that's our first double play in this whole game. There's not been enough base runners generally for a double play. So we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Yankees are desperately searching for some runs. Whitey Ford has pitched very well for the most part. But he's going to have to uh, – they're going to have to take him out of the game. They're going to have to hit for Whitey Ford here, leading off the bottom of the eighth. And they're going to bring in – let's see who the Yankees have here. You got Bob Serve you could bring in. You got Yogi Berra. Why is he not – well, I guess you have Elston Howard, so that makes sense. Um, you have Johnny Blanchard, who hit 305. Um – Bobby Richardson, why is he not playing second base? That doesn't make any sense to me. We might make that change defensively. The, the Yankees are going to bring in Johnny Blanchard to pinch hit for Whitey Ford. And the A's are going to take Vita Blue out of the game. He pitched seven full innings, struck out four, walked two. Only allowed three hits, so he allowed five base runners in seven innings. A fantastic outing from Vita Blue. But the A's will go to their bullpen as he's gone about as far as he can go in this one today. And they will bring in, let's see who we got. We got Raleigh Fingers. We can always bring him in to close things out. You've got Joe Horlan. We could bring him in. Let's see who else they got over here. He's a starter. Blue Moon Odom. Um, we're going to bring in the lefty, Daryl Knowles. So the lefty comes in for Vita Blue. Daryl Knowles strolls in out of the bullpen. And the A's have a lefty on the mound to start things off here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Here comes the pitch to Johnny Blanchard from Daryl Knowles to lead things off in the bottom of the eighth. 
He hits it slowly toward third. Bando has it. He fires to Epstein at first for out number one. Clint, Cleet Boyer now comes up to the plate to face Knowles. Happy to see anyone except Vita Blue at this point. Here's the pitch to Boyer from Knowles. Swung on, hit the shallow center. Jackson comes in. Jackson signaling he's got it, and he puts it away for the out. Hector Lopez now comes to the plate against Knowles with two outs and nobody on. Here's the pitch to Lopez. Ball four. That's like the second or I think that might be the third time today that Lopez has got on base. Yeah, he – no, that's the fourth time. Lopez is two for two with two walks in the game. Lopez has been on base four times in front of Mickey Mantle. And here's the pitch now to Mickey Mantle with two outs, a runner on first. The Yankees are down three to nothing. Mickey Mantle to the plate. Knowles will face Mantle. Swung on. It's a little dribbler to third. Easy play for Bando. He fires to Epstein to take care of Mickey Mantle. And the Yankees are down two. Those final three outs, but first we have the top of the ninth, and we have we got to bring in a new pitcher for the Yankees. Let's see. The Yankees have to get a new pitcher. All right, let's see here. The Yankees are going to bring in – who are we going to bring in here? They're going to bring in Jim Coates. Into the nine spot. And then also, the Yankees are going to make a double switch here as well. They're going to go to the bench and bring in Bobby Richardson to play second base for Billy Gardner. Into the eight spot. So Billy Bobby Richardson comes off the bench. He probably should have been in the lineup the whole time. I didn't notice that when I was going through. I just had the game set the lineup, and for whatever reason, they didn't put Bobby Richardson in there. So now we have Jim Coates, who will start the top of the ninth inning, and the A's have their pitcher up, and they're going to pinch hit for the pitcher spot. Knowles did his job. Didn't allow any runs there in the bottom of the eighth. The A's will be looking to bring in a pinch hitter here. They've got all kinds of people who can pinch hit. Let's see. they got George Hendrick. That looks like, a, I would say, a young George Hendrick here, I think. they got Matty Alou on the bench. Might bring him in. Yeah, I'd say that's going to be our best option as far as pinch hitters go. Matty Alou... Come in and off the bench to pinch hit for Daryl Knowles. And here we go. Top of the ninth inning. Matty Alou will lead things off. Pinch hitting for the A's in the top of the ninth. Here's the pitch from Coates to Alou. It's a piece of Alou, and he glares at Coates as he heads down to first. And so the A's have a runner, the leadoff runner on after being hit by a pitch. And Bando now comes up to the plate. Should we bunt him over? I mean, I've been doing that all day. Didn't work last time. We're going to just hit this time. Alou leads off first. Bando, will the A's bunt? No, he's going to swing away. High drive to left. Lopez has a play and makes the catch. Maybe they should have bunted Alou over. Campanaris, though, comes to the plate with a runner on first, with Alou on first, and one out. Here's the pitch to Campanaris. He hits it, lines sharply up the middle, but Richardson is there, and Campanaris is out. With two outs, that brings Joe Rudy to the plate. Matty Alou stands on first base. And here's the pitch to Rudy from Coates. Hard ground ball to first. The first baseman, though, has it, and he tosses it to Coates for the easy out. We now go to the bullpen. The A's have to bring in a new pitcher. They're going to bring in good old Raleigh Fingers here. As if there was any other option. Raleigh Fingers looks to come in and close things out for the A's here in the bottom of the ninth inning. All right. Bottom of the ninth. The score is three to nothing A's. 
Seven hits for Oakland, three for the Yankees. Roger Maris strolls to the plate here in the bottom of the ninth, looking to make some noise for the Yankees. Here comes the pitch from Fingers to Maris. Off speed, he hits it in the air to center field. Jackson has a long way to go, and that's going to fall in for a base hit, a leadoff single for Roger Maris here in the bottom of the ninth inning. That'll bring up Elston Howard for the Yankees. With Maris on first, nobody out. Here comes the pitch to Howard from Raleigh Fingers. Pitch is on its way. Strike three called, and Howard heads off to the dugout thanks to a sharp slider from Raleigh Fingers. And so the Yankee first baseman, Scowron, comes to the plate. Roger Maris stands on first. There's one out. The Yankees have got to get men on base. Here comes the pitch from Fingers to Scowron. Swing and a miss. Fingers, a sharp breaking ball. And he sits him down. Back-to-back strikeouts for the A's closer. And Tony Kubek now is the last resort now for the Yankees. He's got to get on base here to extend the inning. Two outs. Roger Maris awaits on first base. Here comes the pitch from Fingers to Kubek. Swung on, drilled to the gap in left center. Jackson coming over. He won't have a play. He'll have to play it off the wall. That's going to be a double for Kubek. Would you like the runner to attempt an extra base? You No, no. Man, you got a good chance there. But, like, I mean, if you're out, the game's over. So you can't take risk there. Runners are going to hold. Kubek on second, Maris on third. Bobby Richardson, the tying run, comes to the plate. Here in the bottom of the ninth, two outs. And here comes the pitch from Fingers to Richardson. Here it comes. What's going to happen? Bloop to center. Here comes Jackson. He'll make the easy catch. The ball hung up just long enough for Reggie Jackson to get under it and to make the play. And that's going to do it. The final score, the 1972 Oakland A's 3, the 1961 New York Yankees 0. So that was a boy that was a fun game. It was a pitcher's matchup. It seemed like Oakland Oakland had a 3-1 3 to nothing lead in the top of the 7th, but knowing the hitters that the Yankees had, the game just the A's had a good lead and they were pitching great, but the game to me It felt like it could change at any moment, but the Yankees just couldn't get any offense going against the A's pitching. Vita Blue and Knowles and Raleigh Fingers just shut them down. In fact, the top of the ninth and one inning against Vita Blue, that was the only, really the only kind of scoring opportunities the Yankees even had in this game. Really kind of surprising, Uh, but there you go. Uh, This has been Game 3 in the Great Teams League playoff in Digital Diamond Baseball. The 1972 Oakland A's, they're moving on. So I look forward to seeing you in the next game, and I hope you have a good day.